On to the second part of the podcast with Nancy Corum from St. Julian. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about uh, the next wine that you brought for us. The next wine that we're going to be tasting is our 2005 Braganini Reserve Meritage. So this Meritage has, I have to refer to the label because it changes every year, 42% Merlot, 39% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 19% Cab Franc. 2005 was a really nice warm year for us here in southwest Michigan. So the fruits actually got really nice and ripe. You should feel or taste some really nice dark cherry brambleberry. Uh, being an 05, this actually will have some nice age under it. And what do you sell this one for in the tasting room? This is $29.99 a bottle. Okay. So very food friendly red wine. Can you talk a little bit about what Meritage is? People see a Meritage at a winery. Um, a Meritage, we calling our wine Meritage, we belong to the Meritage Association. And so in order to actually call it, you have to be a part of this association and you have to use the five classic Bordeaux varietals. And we use three of them, the Merlot, Cab Franc, and Cab Sauvignon. And it changes year to year based on what? The percentage of it. We okay. always use those same grapes, but the percentage, um, it might have more Merlot, might have less. Um, this one actually has a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon compared to the Meritages in the past. No Malbec, no Petit Verdot. Correct. We're not warm enough here. <laughs> yeah, it's dark cherry. Definitely. Nose on it. I know this is one of the ones that Shannon has liked in the past. This is one of my favorite uh, St. Julian wines. We've picked up several bottles in the past. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. It's um, reminiscent of the European wines. Um, a lot of the meritages you might find in the store from California, which are going to be big, bold in your face. Uh, high alcohol. What's this, the alcohol on this? Twelve percent. Very food friendly. You can pair it with many different dishes, and your wine's not going to overblow your food. So it's very friendly to meals that you cook. I think the first two were like my type of wines, so this is more your mm -hmm. type of wine. Mm -hmm. It's still a little, little smoky. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think the fruit shows out on it, but there's still some, you know, some minerality, some earthiness to it as well. And you can only get this in the tasting room, right? In our tasting rooms, okay. yes. So that's a reason to visit one of the four tasting rooms. Definitely. They're all over southwest Michigan, or <laughs> south, southern Michigan, so. No excuse for not going. <laughs> so, many so come see us, come taste it out, and hopefully you will be impressed too. Great. What's the next wine you have for us? <clears throat> our next wine is Founder's Pride. Founder's Pride is a newly released wine for St. Julian. David Braganini, our current owner, his grandfather used to make wines in this very style. So this is Frontenac port, so we bring in Frontenac port grapes, and then we blend some of our Slayer Cream Sherry into it. And it has a few little dashes of our 10-year aged brandy in here as well. So it's a really neat dessert wine. Um, I just got back from Judging Tasters Guild today, about an hour ago, and I had some, a lot of neat comments about this wine. I'm anxious for you guys to taste it. This one retails for $15.99. So you get a full 750 milliliter bottle of a fortified one. And you said, you were saying before that this is being released this year for a special reason? Uh, it was just released. We released it a little bit early in honor of St. Julian being around for 90 years. So the year 2011 is our 90th anniversary. So when people say, you make wine in Michigan, we can say we've been making wine in Michigan for 90 years. Absolutely. So you can smell some of that port characteristic in here, a ruby port. You get those nice, dark, rich fruits. And then you get that caramely butterscotch of mm -hmm. the Solaire yeah. and the cherry. That was the first thing that hit me, kind of a... The butterscotch? Yeah, like caramely, mm -hmm. like yeah. this maple syrup kind of. Again, a nice uh, dessert wine. Mm -hmm. What Absolutely. would you pair this with? Chocolate. Okay. That would be good. It's like Always dark, chocolate. Dark chocolate. Always chocolate. Dark mm -hmm. chocolate. Chocolate mousse. I love a really rich chocolate mousse and having a little bit of a streak of it. Mm -hmm. Or just as an after dinner. It could be dessert. It could be dessert. In and of itself. itself. <laughs> really amazed at the finish. Nice long, deep finish. I feel it radiating in like the back of your back of my palate. I can feel it still. Yeah. And again, I think some ports and some dessert wines are a little overly sweet for me, and they, they're syrupy, and, and I don't I don't get that with this. Okay. You know, it's it still it does what it's supposed to do, but it doesn't it doesn't linger as heavy syrup. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have like that cough syrupy characteristic that some that some have, where like you know what I mean? It, where it's like robitussin, -y, you know? No robitussin. <laughs> no no, no robitussin here. <laughs> no, oh, that's I good. Like that. Good. That's great. Well, thank you guys.
Thank you. What we'd like to know from you is what's your favorite St. Julian wine? Let us know. Leave a comment, and I'm sure that Nancy and some of the other folks from St. Julian will be uh, responding to those comments and taking a look at them, so let us know. And until then, keep checking out Michigan by the Bottle at michiganbythebottle.com, where we're supporting the state with every sip.